Hi, welcome back to this uh, series of videos I'm making on using ggplot2 to draw pretty graphics uh, using the R statistical programming language and also uh, give you a basic introduction to uh, using R. Um, this is pitch to beginners, you're not supposed to know how to do it already, so let's get this going. So as a reminder from previous things, this is the RStudio uh, Cloud project that we're working in, so I would normally click on this link, but what I can do instead is tab over here to where I have one opened earlier so that I don't have to wait uh, several seconds for this thing to load. Okay, so where we left things last time, we had this set of exercises where we were, I was, uh, I'd asked you to create the recreate the last plot um, and then play around with a set of mapped variables that's things in your data uh, and change the aesthetics to which they're being mapped that's the characteristics of the plot so let's just quickly do that I promised you I would do it myself so I'll just tab over here and say okay the relevant part of the code to doing all that is here this is the mapping and so this is the call to the AS function that specifies the aesthetic mapping. So for instance if I want to just change that from city mileage to highway mileage which actually is what I think it was originally so I'm saving with control S source with control uh, shift S and we have the plot that we should we are familiar with. If I instead say on the y-axis I will plot the, um, uh, I don't know, well let's, let's go back to the, um, <laughs> actually you know what, I'm going to do a silly plot. Uh, I'm going to plot it with a number of cylinders on the y-axis. Um, so we'll go uh, control S to save, control, okay the number of cylinders is a discrete valued thing obviously, you can only have four cylinders, apparently five, I had no idea, six or eight cylinders in an engine. Um, so this is maybe not the best kind of thing to do as a scatter plot, but you get what you get the idea of what happens when you plot different things on the x and y axis. But let's go back to how we had it before. So hey, highway. Okay, so on the x axis we've got the engine displacement in liters, that's the size of the engine, y axis is your highway mileage. Um, what I want to do as well things I might want to do as well though is say let's say the number of cylinders could be the color right so if I go cylinders uh, if I go color that gives me not that it's going to give me I just hit the wrong uh, hotkey let's go control shift s to source it okay so there's there's our plot with uh, uh, mileage on it what if um, I wanted the color not to be something that varies with the data but to be a fixed uh, color. Let's say I want everything to be red. It is very very tempting to do this. Everybody does it at some point in their life so I'm going to show a mistake that everybody makes. No, let's not do red, that's the worst possible choice. Let's say I want everything to be in the color purple. So we go control S to save, control shift S to source, and okay, we've got something that kind of makes sense, but not really. It has understood that color that color has to correspond to whatever it is that I've written here on line 15, but it's decided instead to act as though every single data point uh, is associated with some data and that data corresponds to the word purple. That's no good. What I want to do is say no 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 be literal. Make the dots a purple color. Purple is not part of my data set. Purple is just a f thing I want to do. I just like purple. So because purple here is not part of the MPG data set, it's not a thing I want, it's not part of the data I want to represent, it should not be part of this section at all. Anything you want to be a fixed value does not go inside the mapping because you're not mapping data to a plot thing, you're just changing a parameter of the plot. So let's just get rid of that. What I can do instead is go color equals purple 
here. So now what we've got is I've got geom point, mapping equals all of that, comma, color equals purple, and then I've closed the bracket to end. Notice the little highlighting thing that's popping up. This is a helpful guide to tell you things. Um, so then I've closed out my geom point command, and now this should work. So let's see. We save, we source, and what have I done wrong? Object purple not found. Oh no, I've made a mistake. <sighs> this is another thing uh, that is easy to make a mistake uh, with. When you are typing in the name of a variable in your data set, like this, these are without quotes. This is an object inside your data uh, frame. Your data frame is MPEG, so it's these things are variables. Purple is not the name of a variable, though. Purple is just supposed to be the color purple. It's the name of a color. So if it's supposed to be a literal thing, like it's just, hey, this isn't a variable, this is just a, a color, it's just a number or whatever. Well, sorry, I should be more precise. If it is a string, if it is just a piece of text, then you should put it in quotes. So we'll do it like this, we'll go color equals purple. Now, will it work? Let's hope so. Hey, it works! Okay, so now we've learnt how to set the colour to be purple. Notice the difference here. These things are aesthetics because they are characteristics of the data that are being mapped onto uh, characteristics of the plot. Things that are just constants, that are just fixed values, um, are called parameters and you just insert them directly into the, com the, uh, the commands. So if I went I don't know. Let's do something a bit silly. Let's go size equals six, save, source, and okay, we've got some terribly big dots now. Um, that might be a little bit too big. But I could do instead something like this. Size and color can be both aesthetics and parameters. Size equals sil. Do I do it like that? Yes, I do it like that. I do it without the without the quotes. So if we use the size of the dot to be the number of cylinders, we can go Control Shift S for sourcing again, and the plot we get shows you the size of the dot mapping onto the number of cylinders. So bigger dots correspond to things with more cylinders. Unlike the plot you saw last time, uh, at least this has the feeling of okay. On the, on the little legend over here, 4 is a discrete category, 5 is a discrete category, etc. That's nice. Um, this is still a really ugly plot. What I really wanted to do, though, is go back to this. Color. Let's do color with sill. Okay. So we'll save that. And let's source it again. What went wrong? Oh no. I've made a mistake. I sometimes make mistakes on purpose. Sometimes they actually happen. I'm not, and I refuse to tell you which was which. You could probably work it out from how surprised I am. The problem is, I've specified color as both an aesthetic here and as a parameter. Ah, and as a parameter here. Because I've made that mistake, um, R has only used one of them. So let's just get back to this, and I save and a source, and now we get this plot again. So I should at least show you a trick to tell R to treat cylinder as a discrete variable for the purposes of picking colors. And here it is. You just say, ah, okay. It helps if you can type. If I go factor, so what it will do is treat this as a categorical variable. So we save, we source, and we get uh, colors that are more clearly distinguishable. Um, admittedly not to me, I'm tilting my head to the side because I can't see very well because of the sunglasses, um, the polarization, but you get the idea. Um, so 
that gives you a plot that kind of makes uh, a little bit more sense. Okay, so we've played around quite a bit now with aesthetics and with um, uh, mappings and all of that kind of stuff and, and I've introduced the concept of parameters. Let's go back to some new theoretical ideas. I can't remember what I'm doing. Help! 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 I don't know what I'm doing here! Um, that's the button I want. Okay, so the next thing we want, I want to talk about is something that I've kind of laid the groundwork for already early on. It's this idea that ggplot objects are built in layers. So think of it like a layered cake. We're, we're baking a cake with lots of layers. We're stacking on top of each other. So if you recall, um, I'm just grabbing my coffee because I'm really, really tired. I started with uh, ggplot um, on its own, which just gives you this blank canvas. And then what I've done is I added G on point to create this, um, you know, the, the scatter plot with the dots on it. But I can keep adding layers by just going plot plus and adding more geoms. For example, if I wanted to overlay a uh, just a smooth, uh, a smooth line, a nonlinear regression that runs through these points, I can use geom smooth to do that and I can just build this up bit by bit by bit. So here's how uh, I would do it. I would take the plot that has this points layer that looks like that and then all I have to do is just add another uh, another layer. And each layer can have its own mapping. Oh, that's a point I'll come back to in a moment. But um, what I'm going to do is say, okay, we'll just add the information for that plot. So let's go and do it. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm losing. Ooh, that's a good one. Now you're seeing little bits and pieces of my computer. That's a bad sign. Okay. Hey. Okay. So here's how we. Let's go back here. Here's how we do it. All of this stuff here, in lines 11 through 17, are the geom point. So we go plus, then we go geom. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go geom smooth. Now, because of the way that I've been doing these commands so far, GeomSmooth is going to need to have its own mapping set up. So I better do that. This is uh, kind of redundant and annoying. Like, I hate having to type uh, things over and over again. So later on, I'm going to show you a way of having to do less typing, but I find it is useful to start with a slightly more verbose way of doing this. So, okay, let's just say for my, my smooth regression, I just want to have, uh, just, uh, I'll ignore the, the number of cylinders for the purposes of drawing my smoothing. So I'm just going to go x equals dispel, y equals hua, and that'll do. So I've now got a geom smooth layer that I've added over the top of the geom points layer. So save, source, and voila. There's our plot. You can see that it's got underneath, it's got the, the same scatter plot with the dots corresponding to the number of cylinders. And now over the top, we've got this uh, smooth regression line uh, and it's even got a nice little error band uh, uh, wrapped around it as well. So that's kind of nice. Okay. So now I will wrap this one up in just a sec. Um, that's the idea of adding layers. There's now an exercise uh, for you to do. Um, so again, recreate the, the plot with geom point on your own. Add the uh, geom smooth uh, layer with the regression thing. And then I want you to explore a little bit. Have a look around at some of the other geoms that exist uh, within um, within R. What I'll suggest as a possibility in particular is to add a third layer to the existing plot. So I've shown you the, the plot with two layers on it, one with geom point, then geom smooth, add a third one with geom rug and find out what geom rug does. And I will leave it, uh, I will leave it there. <laughs>